Hey everyone, welcome back to Kona Qualified, where every week I speak about relatives, life topics, with goal making us better together. This week I have a very special guest, Jonathan Kurth, who has an incredible story that I know you're going to be inspired by. Let's rock and roll. Alright everyone, so, very happy about this guest today. Jonathan Kurth, my man, I've known this guy for several years since growing up, going, going back to school, going back to actually church with each other several years ago, mutual family friends, and just brought us together through that. And uh, Jonathan has a unique story, man. He's, uh, he's, he has a unique skin condition, and but he's been able to, despite his appearance, which this guy, if you get to know him, man, he is an incredible guy, incredible personality. And just, you know, he might look different on the outside, but once you get to know this man, he has a phenomenal personality, has strong beliefs, strong convictions, and really lives out his life in a way that's different from the status quo. He makes his life magnificent regardless of what the hand that he's been dealt. So I am super inspired by this man and just wanted to share your story, share your story today, man. So Jonathan, yeah. first of all, starting out, why don't you tell us about what's the skin condition you were born with, so people can understand? Because that's it's. You told me several months ago this when we were in a small group yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was born with a condition called ectodermal dysplasia. Um, basically, it affects several things related to the dermis, um, skin, hair, eyes, teeth, uh, things of that nature. I was actually born with. Um, I think it was like 12 teeth, so uh, really? not very, yeah, this is all, this is all <laughs> <laughs> doctors, man. Hey, you're sick, man. <laughs> yeah, um, um, so yeah, I was, it, it's a very, very uh, unique, rare thing. Hardly anyone's ever had it, uh, to my knowledge. What's, I, the, what's the ratio? like? Um, I, I remember doing the research on it one time. I don't remember the exact number, but it's a very, very, very small populace of people. Really? Very small. So, yeah, like I think less than 5,000 people. Small. Really? Yeah. So. Holy cow. And there's a lot in of people. Our in world. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Well, hey, you know what, dude? That one of the things I mentioned before is how I'm just really just set back. I guess not set back. But really, just admire. I admire how your personality is. I admire how you look at the world. Because some people, whenever they're born with a certain condition, they look at like, oh gosh, I'm so this, I'm so that, and they get so insecure with their image, right? Yeah. And especially yeah, in the right. world we live today. I mean, a lot sure. of it is image driven. You know, how yeah. you look, six pack abs. You know, thin, thin filters fit. on Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. But at the same time, it's like there's so much of a facade that people put up, and you don't really get down to the the nitty gritty of who people really are. Because yeah. it's, it's it's easy for anybody to put up a facade, right? Yep. Or a facade. I can easily you know go to the bank and get a loan for a house I can't afford. Go to the <laughs> Go, you know, so go, they'll they'll make me so I can afford a car I can't afford, or yeah. you know, I can get get you know get in so much debt to put on this facade of things that that make me look like I'm doing better than I really am. When the inside is really filthy, right? Yeah. The inside is really ugly. No one wants to care or really know about that. Yeah. So, how have you really been able to? How have you been able to have such a incredible psychology? Essentially. How have you been able to have that self confidence to be able to go out and put yourself there, put out, your, put yourself out in the world? Because you're successful in business today. You work in the financial services department, and you're growing that business like crazy. I mean, you just recently walked me through the numbers that you can make. It's phenomenal, and I know you're going to achieve it. Yeah. But how have you been able to manage having a incredible psychology to be able to be self confident in spite of the world telling you that you know you should just lock yourself in a room, not come out because no one wants to see you? Yeah. How do you be able to have that sense of self-confidence, essentially security, despite you know being born with a rare, rare yeah. illness? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think so. The first thing for me, um, you you know me. I'm a very um, I'm a very spiritual person. I think the biggest thing is um, from a very young age, I found my identity in what God thought of me, not what others thought of me. Sure. So I think that's the most significant thing up front. Um, beyond that, though, I think kind of how you interact with people and how you carry yourself sets the precedent in your relationship with that person. Now what I mean by that is if you enter a room very confidently, people uh, like just assume you're very confident. They feed off. Yeah, they feed off of that. And so you kind of set the precedent for every relationship you encounter with how you carry yourself. Um, an, an example I love to use all the time when talking about this is it's kind of like a dog, right? They sense fear in people, correct? And so the more scared, the more fearful you are, the more those dogs feed on that. Well, I think humans are the same way. The the more you're insecure, the more you're afraid of what everyone thinks, somehow there's something in the world that humans sense that self-confidence issues, and that's when they strike. 
And I, I think, you know, if people are going to be making fun of you and things of that nature, it's whenever you have, you're insecure, whenever you um, have those self-confidence issues. Um, I, I'm a huge sports fan, Ryan, and so I've been to many Rangers games, and this is such a kindergarten example, but many times <laughs> I've gone into the lower level of the Rangers stadium when I had a ticket in the third deck. You might be like, well, how'd you do that? I walked down there, I acted like I was supposed to be there, and everyone just assumed I was supposed to be there, and they just let me walk right in, right? And so, I hope that can't legally be used against me somewhere. <laughs> well, uh, we'll, we'll edit this. You know. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so I think, you know, how you walk into a room, how, you know, people... The confidence. Though, yeah, the, the confidence, people feed off of that, and, you know, that's how they're going to treat you is how what you put out there, what you present to them. Right. Essentially, like, the, like the, back to the whole law of attraction kind of thing. I mean, there's certain aspects of it I agree or disagree with, but essentially what you put out is what you tend to get back, right? Yeah. You put out, you know, that, that lack of confidence that you might say, you might you just said about, I mean, you're going to get people that are not going to be confident in you. You put yeah. out the, you, that you're an incredibly insecure person because of your appearance, you're gonna get you're gonna get that kind of people that are gonna be judgmental. Maybe people are gonna judge you regardless, but yeah. at the same time, it's gonna be a whole lot more so if you're not confident in yourself. So yeah. you have to have that yeah, that thing. But I'm glad you found that in spirituality. I mean, a lot of, whether you want to be through a spiritual perspective or just a universal perspective, you gotta have that. You gotta find what works best for you. Yeah. You, know, you gotta find what work what. what you got to find that extra thing that'll give you that boost to get you through those hard times. And I'm sure you probably had some of those difficult times. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, have you ever, were you ever bullied whenever you were younger as well? Actually, amazingly, I never was. Really? And honestly, I think it's a hundred percent how I carried myself. Um, I mean, not to sound like braggadocious or anything, but I was fairly popular in school. Always had a lot of friends, and I've even had friends tell me before they're like. We, we somehow got on a deeper conversation and started talking about some of this stuff and they tell me all the time they're like I honestly totally forget you even look any different like yeah. it's just because they yeah. don't see that anymore because that's not what I'm focusing on it, right. it, it's kind of like someone says don't look at that and that's all you see right, right? and then you, you just ignore the fact um, and don't care about it and right. no one really seems to like really focus or uh, pay attention to it. Um, it was interesting though. I, I remember my parents told me one time. Uh, I was in, I was in high school. I was playing basketball, and we I, we had a tournament or something like that. And there was a parent from the other school, and I guess their son had the same condition. Very rare, really? obviously. And my parents were in conversation with them, and they they asked me. They they asked my parents that same thing. They're like, "Did your son ever get bullied?" Because I think their their son dealt with those um, issues. And my parents were like, honestly, no, not really. And I think, I think the biggest difference is I just set the precedent that I'm no different than anyone else. You decided ahead of time. I decided ahead of time uh, I'm no different than anyone else. And a lot of that comes from my parents. They right. didn't ever treat me any different. I'm just like everyone else right. out there in the world. Um, and so I just determined to be myself and to be, a lot of my friends call me by my last name, Curse. And I can't tell you how many times they've been explaining or describing a situation and they're like, eh, it's just, it's just cursed. <laughs> and like, honestly, that's one of the greatest compliments sure. anyone can give to me is, man, they know me so much by who I am, right. not because of some image I'm trying to create. It's right. just, eh, that's just cursed. He's right. just being cursed. Um, and so like, that's a huge compliment for yeah. me in my opinion. Especially that you built up your identity to not be what your appearance is, but who you are. Yeah, you know, for sure. I mean, so many people find their identity and who what their appearance is, what they look like. Well, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, or the other thing, and they don't they don't look inside and be like, you know what, I'm I, I might look like this or I might have this setback. Like I think Nick Buchisic is a great example yeah, of that. He's I mean, awesome. I mean, if you're not familiar with, look this guy up. It's Nick Buch. I forget how to spell his last name, but uh, boy, you chit chatting. Oh, okay. well, you know. V U J something. Okay, yeah. I'll put a link in the description to a video <laughs> that you should watch of him. But this gentleman was born, if you're not familiar, was born without any arms or legs. But he's a motivational speaker today. He's written was it four? I know at least three, maybe four or five different books. Yeah. He's got a beautiful wife, and he's got two. I think two kids as well. A so third I mean, on the way. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. this guy. I mean, he's been incredible, and he. But he was able to decide ahead of time what his happiness is going to be determined by. He wasn't yeah. going to be determined by how his circumstances are arranged, just like you said. It's going to be determined how you choose to arrange your mind. You know. So that's that. That is incredibly inspiring for me, just because, like, I mean, it's 
it's it's all comes back to how you choose to define your psychology. Yeah. You know, you know? and so for sure. But man, this this is you know, let's get it. I want to you know, I want to get what I want to get into more <laughs> more what you stand for, man. So like, what are you passionate about most today? Yeah, uh, probably the most passionate thing I am today is building my business and building it to the place that I want to get it to. I know I have a I have a huge passion for um, you know creating that business, putting it in the place I want it to be at, so then down the road when I have kids, when I have, well, a wife first, when I have a wife and kids, <laughs> first thing first, right? <laughs> yeah, when I have a wife and kids that, you know, I'm in that place where I get to make the decision based on what I want to do, not based on what I have to do just to get by. And so I'm very passionate about creating that and making that a reality, you know, Sooner than later. If that you know, makes success sense. is not an overnight experience; it's a process. Yeah, you know, for sure. You know, so you're setting up your future today versus you know when the future gets here. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. What What do you think makes a person beautiful? You know, like I like not that it's physically, physically yeah. attractive. Obviously, we can say that. Yeah, <laughs> blonde, yeah, sure, right. But like, what, what makes a person beautiful more than just physically appearance? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing that I'm drawn to people is when they can just be themselves. Mm. Um, because I think being yourself and not being some fake thing that you're trying to present on social media, I think to me that's the most attractive quality someone can present of themselves. Um, I, I, I honestly think the most unattractive thing is when people are just trying to be posers or, um, you know, be someone who they're not. And I'm just like, why are you trying so much effort to be someone you're not? when it's so much easier to just be who you are and it's so much more attractive at yep. the same time. You don't have to forget like, oh crap, I, I meant to be act yeah. this way and I forgot, you know. Yeah, or, exactly. It's like living a lie almost. Or it is living a lie because you're not being who yeah. you are. So, yeah, I've already, I've already, never mind, I was going to ask that question already. <laughs> so what are you most grateful for in your personal life today? Man, that's a good question. Um, you know, other than, you know, my salvation through Jesus, I'd probably say um, probably the foundation my parents laid for me because I've encountered so many people who have such a broken situation, such a broken family life, and I've seen the drastic negative impacts it's had on their family. And, you know, having parents who have had a very successful marriage, 36 years strong now, awesome. and... You know, just knowing that at the end of the day, regardless of what happens, knowing that I have those two people there to, you know, give me guidance or, you know, anything like that, I think having that rock of foundation, um, I, I think that's probably the thing that I'm most thankful for. And <laughs> mom and dad, if you're watching this, I probably don't say that enough, but I really do. <laughs> so for the record, you know, <laughs> dude, I think that's you know that's something that we, we can easily take for granted. I mean, I know yeah. my parents, jeez, they've been married for 30, 38 years. I think I think this year was thirty eight, either thirty eight or something like that. I don't know, but yeah. anyways, um, yeah, I mean, it's just like not everyone is afforded that same luxury. I mean, we kind of, like I said, take it for granted, unfortunately, but it's like the same time, not, you know, some kids were, were gr unfortunately grew up in broken households. I mean, marriage, with divorce rates like over 50%. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's something that, you know, I need to, I, I, I myself need to get better. Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, I, I actually, I, I do, you know, I'm not as, not as more as I should, I will from now on, but like, thanking my parents for being an example to me. I mean, not saying that if you're a single mom or single parent, you can't be an example. Obviously, that's not what I'm saying, but yeah. at the same time, that my parents gave me, you know, gave us the foundation to where we are today, and yeah. gave us the example of what a what a marriage what a marriage looks like, you know, what what it's supposed to look like, you know, and so it's a uh, it's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, so, yeah, for that's, sure. that's awesome, awesome. That's a good thing to be grateful for, though. So, I mean, you have you have nieces and nephews, Jonathan, coming up. Yeah. What are what are three things that you'd like to teach them to better prepare them to be successful in life? Yeah. Uh, probably my sense of humor would be no. Uh, no <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> Another edit. <yeah. laughs> I'm not that arrogant. Um, you know, I think number one is be yourself and don't let other people define who you are. Um, just be yourself. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. Is you know, just it, you don't have to act a certain way that the world is presenting and forcing on you. You don't have to do that. Just right. simply be yourself. I think another thing is live your life with confidence. Uh, that's going to take you so far in so many areas in life. You know, in my situation, I think that's 
allowed it where, you know, people never looked at me any differently. And, I, you know, I think in school, in business, in relationships, I think confidence is going to take you way farther than, you know, someone who doesn't have confidence. Right. Um, and then be positive, man. Like, I, I can't stand people who are negative. And, like, you're like if you're going to live life, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you're going to live life, would you rather be positive and always laughing and having fun? Right. Or would you rather be negative? You know, I don't want to be around negative people. I want right. to be around positive people. And you're going to attract those kind of people if you're positive, you know? Yeah. And so be positive, attract positive people, and life's going to be a whole lot more fun that way. I, I love, I, I definitely agree with that. I love what Lewis Howe said. There was a post of his actually reposted recently, but it said, you cannot hang around negative people and expect to have live a positive life. Yeah. So it's like... Yeah, that's so I, true, it, though. It, but, like, I... I put so much emphasis in surrounding, my, in surrounding myself with people that will make me better. I mean, yeah. I, I have zero time in my life to surround myself with people that are negative, that are not goal-oriented. I'm not saying it's wrong if you're not goal-oriented. Not everyone's going to be a type A personality that's always going for it 100% of the time, whatever. But I want to surround myself with people that are going to be encouraging, that are going to build me up, that are going to make me a better person, that are going to make me the kind of person I, w I want to be remembered by. You know. Yeah. So to your point, yeah. Life's too short to be negative, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, life's too short to live in a positive way. But be confident in yourself, like you said. Yeah. That, that's awesome, man. That's well, cool. I guess you think highly of me if, if we're here right there now. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> but uh, so here's, here's, here's one of the couple, couple of the last questions, and we'll uh, wrap this thing up, man. So how do you live your life in a way to where you get to your deathbed and have no regrets? You know, there's, no, there's none of this, like, I should have done this. I could have done that. You know, instead, there's only, wow. You know, what a life I lived. Like, get to your deathbed yeah. and you're like, yes. Like, I did <laughs> this. I did that. Not in a bravado, arrogant kind of way. It was just like, wow. I was able to contribute far beyond what I at first thought my capabilities were and what I thought my potential was. I essentially cultivated that mindset that's going to take me further and further. How do you position yourself to live a life with no regrets? You know, obviously, along the way, along the road, we're going to have our bumps. We're going to have our bruises, right? Sure. But I think when you're always looking forward and you're always learning from everything you go through, you know, I think that's how you get there. Because if you're always growing, if you're always building off um, your failures, your mistakes, you're building off the positive things, you're building off the accomplishments, and you're just head forward, always looking to the future, um, eventually you're going to get down the road and you'll be amazed with everything you've accomplished because you, you learn from so many things along the way because you know why is because you were looking forward you, you you didn't have to you know check you know right. what your past you didn't have to worry about any of that it was just focused going forward and so I, I i think that would be the ultimate thing getting to your deathbed knowing that you were always looking forward you were always learning from your experiences and you can't possibly always learn from your experiences and not just keep going up and up and up right. you know what i mean right. and so i i think that would be satisfaction at the end of the day is knowing that you just always kept your head going forward regardless of what came at you because i know life is going to come at you um right. sometimes you, you feel like it's not fair but just stay positive stay stay looking forward and you're going to get to the place that you want to be eventually if you just keep moving forward it's awesome yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, people are so afraid of failure and they're so afraid of taking that risk. But I think what draw to your point right there, it's like to add to it, I should say, you have to you have to use that fear to drive. You. I mean, for me, I think of what my what my life will be like if I don't take the action, if yeah. I don't set myself, like you said at the beginning, setting yourself up to where your family has that financial freedom or the capability to do whatever they want. Whenever you think of what your life might be like if you don't take the action, that's more scary to me than yeah. just taking the action because I don't want to. I don't want to get to my deathbed knowing that I didn't do this, I didn't do that. That you know, I think Gary Vaynerchuk is one of the, you know, one of the most biggest contributors of this because he talks about if you want to see regret, go to a nursing home. You know, go to a nursing home and see people that are out of time. They don't have the capability, unfortunately, to go out and achieve their dreams because they're out of time. Yeah. So. 
let that fear drive you. you know, let yeah. that fear you know be the reason why you're pushing forward and never settling for life mediocrity and always forcing yourself to make that magnificent life. Yeah. So before I ask before I ask the la- um, second actually let's go ahead and ask the second last question. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sounds good. What are the daily habits that are non negotiable for you? You know, I think any day that you are not moving forward, you're actually moving backwards. I don't think you just stay stagnant. I think you're actually moving backwards when you're not moving forward. Right. So for me, it's improving in every area I can. For me, that's improving my spiritual life on a daily basis. That's improving my business life on a d- daily basis. That's improving my relationships on a daily basis. And if you want to look at the practicality of that, how does that actually look? For me, it's you know making sure I'm in my doing my meetings every day that I, I need to be getting to. Or, you know, on a friendship level, you know, it's, you know, having a relationship with those friends on a daily basis. And so I think any day that you're not moving forward, you're actually regressing. Yeah. It's not, there, there's, I don't think there's such a thing as staying stagnant in one place. Right. That, that, you know, that doesn't happen. Like if you're swimming in the ocean, you're either moving forward or if you stop, you're moving backwards, right? Yeah. Like you're not just staying in that one place isolated position and so that's, that's why my non-negotiable is make sure you're moving forward because doing nothing is moving back that's a good point yeah i love that better every day is the adage man yeah that's awesome yeah that's very cool well jonathan before i ask the last question i want to acknowledge you for a second you we just recently jonathan and i just recently got connected again through a small group and uh, when I started, when he when he started talking and he was talking about all these things that the people from people that I love, like the Gary Vaynerchuks, the Tony Robbins, and Jim Rohn, you know Jim Rohn, all these kind of people, I was like, man, this guy actually, you know, he's he's, he's a lot like myself and the things that he's learned and being influenced by. And it's funny acknowledge you for a second, man. Like I am this, you know, the reason I want to set up this interview with you because you made a statement a while back at the small group that I was talking about how you define your self confidence and how you define yourself and how you continue to push forward to push the boundaries of what's possible that, you know, in spite of not essentially having the facade that most people would think that you should have. Like yeah. this, this per, a certain successful person should be, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, or should be the fit and, you know, hey, all this kind I, of stuff. I got both of those. Hey, so. yeah, no, 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 but like, <laughs> should have a different, you know, different, I guess a different look, but like, you know what, you're like, you know what, who cares about that? That's not, the, the way I look doesn't define me. I can be a good looking person or not. I think you're a good looking guy, hey, but I mean, it's just like, it's how you choose to live your life on a daily basis, and you've chosen yeah. to do that. You've chosen to not be be a victim, but to but all, but you've chosen to not be a victim, but also to take responsibility for your life and make your life how you want it to be. And I applaud you for that, man. It's it's a really it's admirable because a lot of people I know that you mentioned that one kid before that did experience bullying. Yeah, it's how it, it's how his it's how his mindset came. It's how it's ultimately how his mindset was developed. But also, it's how he chose to present himself, and it's also you know the level of self confidence that you had. So I just admire you for that, for not being a victim, but but deciding to rise up and be create something that that was not expected for people to create. So I admire yeah. you for that, man. Well, I appreciate awesome. it, and man, I, I love everything you're doing, whether you know with the code qualified and you know you being better every single day. You know, I think that hits home for everyone. You know, everyone can be better. Every Right back at you, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. All right, man. Well, final question. How do you define a magnificent life? Man, how do I define a magnificent life? Um, You know, I think at the end of the day, for me, a magnificent life would be one where I am, you know, treating everyone with, um, I guess, just the absolute best. I'm bettering my relationships, you know, spiritually, relationally with a spouse, with, you know, a brother, a parent all those people and I'm influencing them in a way that it's creating a compounding type effect in life. Because the way I treat you, Ryan, could affect how you treat someone else along the way. And so I think if you just live your life in a way where you're positive, you're treating everyone the best way you possibly can in your everyday encounters, that's gonna have a compounding life or compounding effect over time. And at the end of the day, that to me that would be magnificent because you, you're influencing so many people, and all you did was influence your little sphere of people. But it, then it just like spreads out because of that compounding effect. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, right, Jonathan, thank you for coming on the show, man. Appreciate, I appreciate it, Brian. That. Thanks for having me. You're welcome.